can't tell you how many times I've been brought into a dispute between a parent and a school district and the parent's belief that something either, either is supposed to happen or should have happened is based on an off the record conversation that they had with someone in the <laughs> school, a teacher, a paraprofessional, a related service provider, and the parent is going on the assumption that that is a reliable source of information. First of all, I'm always a little hesitant whenever someone says that something's off the record, because it usually means that somebody, whoever's saying it, isn't prepared to put it on the record. And that means that that person is in all likelihood not going to stand up for what's right in the IEP meeting where the decision's going to be made, right? On top of that, you know, if, it, if it's a situation that that person's saying it's off the record because they're concerned about being retaliated against in their job or losing losing their job because they're telling a parent that their child needs something more than the administration perhaps want to give the child, then you have to find a way to get that information out into the record without throwing that person under the bus, so to speak. Just say it's not that. so easy to do that. So okay. you want to make sure that somehow you get that recommendation on the record. Perhaps you're going to need to get a little clever about how you can bring it up on at an IEP team meeting and you do get it in the record. Because unfortunately, when things aren't in writing, it doesn't hold the team accountable to doing that thing, Jen. Yeah, it, it's so true. And uh, when it comes down to it, sometimes you can get at that information that you've learned off the record by, it's a good time actually to, to blame it on the advocate or the attorney who goes to the meeting because if I have the information that, as an example, the student's supposed to be getting an hour a week of speech but in fact is not getting the hour a week of speech, I can pull a routine at an IEP meeting, what I call the Columbo routine, where I very innocently say, you know, we're not seeing any reports coming home about speech. Is he getting the speech? And then that sort of gives the person who's been off the record the opportunity to say, later, well, I felt like I had to answer the question, and so that's why I answered it. And then you're not really intentionally getting someone in trouble, but you're getting the information on the record, which is the key. Right. And the document really does need to reflect the actual services that your child is receiving. And you know, here's the thing I always like to say. Pretend that you're going to move tomorrow. That document needs to reflect exactly what your child is receiving, because the place that you're moving to is going to say, well, I don't see speech and speech and language services here, but I swear to you, my child was receiving them. Well, there's really no obligation for them to perhaps consider it if it wasn't on the record before. Well, I mean, they have to always consider any information that a parent brings to the team, as you know, but ultimately they don't have to do it unless it's in the IEP document. So it's important that it gets in the record, in the document, in writing.